You welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this online training by Crowder Agriculture. It is a great pleasure to have you on board in this time of COVID-19 pandemic. This series of training have been called out with the objective of equipping our highly esteemed participants on how to diversify their income through precision agriculture with focus on minor livestock. At this time, I will introduce our Crowder Agriculture. Crowder Agriculture works closely with public and private sectors in Nigeria, also providing service related to agribusiness. As an agribusiness consultant, we map, monitor, survey, market, and formulate strategies of increasing sales in all kinds of agro products. Our teams of business consultants have experience in delivering practical agro business solutions with a detail of all types of farming system. We help in development of business plan and improving the efficiency of a current system. Our plans are based on practical and informed knowledge of farming and rural activities. Also, we advise clients on strategic business planning and performing monitoring service in exploring their options, benchmark performance, reducing costs, increasing income, and help to ensure long-term business viability through strategic business reviews. However, part of our main focus is to provide environmental stewardship advice across a wide range of farming, also empower farmers across Nigeria by getting them to fundings, support, quality seeds, and capacity building to improve yield in the country. Our service follows the best practical principles of wildlife, including the environment, soil, with broad knowledge in agribusiness, is a master trainer in, on agricultural development projects, and currently is the general manager of Agriculture. Dr. Abdulaziz, you're welcome, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my singular honor and pleasure to be with you this morning. This training is targeted not only to the youth, but across all classes and ages. As a civil servant, unemployed, market woman, and any other person who can lay his hand on this training. And I hope this training is going to do justice to whatever you are going to list in. And uh, we hope after this training, you are going to establish your own farm where we do the marketing for you. The topic of today is diversifying your income through agriculture with focus on minor livestock. However, the minor livestock we are going to talk about today is going to be snail. It is popular to those people who are in the East Aziz of the country and the West Aziz. However, the North are not too conversant with it. So this is a great opportunity for people to key into this. Uh, snails are invertebrate animals known as molluscs. They belong to the class of gastropods. The culture of snail is known as a culture or heliculture. Snail farming has been practiced 50 years before the coming of Christ. And in Rome, it has been used as a medium of honoring guests with high dignity. And um, it is good to look at the common names of snail we have in Nigeria. Um, Hausa people call it Dodandoki. Why the people call it Ejuna? Why the Yoruba people call it Ibin? Snails have been consumed by women worldwide since prehistoric times. Recent studies have shown that Grandula substance in edible snail meat cause 
agglutination of certain bacteria, which could be of value in fighting a variety of ailments, including whooping cough. Edible snails plays an important role in fox medicine. In Ghana, for instance, the bluish liquid obtained from the shell when the meat has been removed is believed to be good for the infant development. And it's also important in the treatment of anemia, ulcer, and asthma. In West Africa, snail meat has traditionally been a major ingredient in the diets of people living in the high forest belt. In Cote d'Ivoire, for example, an estimated 7.9 million kg are eaten annually. In Ghana, it is clear that the demand currently has strict supply. International trade in snail is flourishing in Europe, not America. However, in spite of the considerable foreign and local demand, commercial farms such as those in Europe, Southeast Asia, and the America hardly exist in Africa. This is a great opportunity for us to keep in so that we can meet some standards. In Ghana, Nigeria, and Cote d'Ivoire, where snail meat is particularly popular, snails are gathered from the forest during the wet season. In recent years, white snails' population have declined considerably, primarily because of the impact of such activities such as deforestation, pesticide use, slash and bone agriculture, spontaneous bushfire, and so many others that follows. It is therefore important we encourage ourselves, both the youth and the old, to participate in snail farming in order to conserve this important species. Now let's look at the merits of snail farming. This is a high yielding venture which requires relatively low capital when compared to other farms for animal farming. For instance, if you want to key into cattle production, you know, only the capital required for you to buy the hypha is so exorbitant. Uh, let's say the shika brown. A kg of shika brown goes for 1,000 naira per kg, and then the hypha of a shika brown weighs around 40 to 50 kg. Therefore, you need around 40,000 to 50,000 just to purchase one hypha. And for instance, if you want to go into sheep and wool production, this also requires a good amount of capital investment. Thereby, you need a standard housing, exotic breeds, who are, which are always not available within our reach. So as compared to other farming systems, snail farming requires lesser capital, where you can even start farming it in your own backyard and make good profit out of it. And as we all know, snail provide a cheap source of high quality protein. Um, you know, it is no, it is no longer a news that the COVID nineteen pandemic has really, has really caused havoc into our pocket. So thereby, people can no longer purchase mutton, beef, neither even the chicken that uh, were normally available. So now people will now prefer to go for what they can afford, and. Um, Snail as well is high in, uh, in quality with around 45 to 50% protein content and iron of around 45 to 50% also. And as we all know, I earlier mentioned that it is what's good in therapeutic values. You know, uh, ulcer and asthma is one of the elements that is threatening our life today. So it is very good and important that we try as much as possible we try as much as possible to see that this particular venture is being standardized so that we can be able to sustain our health. And uh, as I earlier mentioned, I said this is going to be helpful to people who seem not to have time because it doesn't need much of your time. Snail farming doesn't need much of your time. You can just visit the farm in the morning and if you are done for the day because there's no need for vaccination, daily routine, such as what will happen in poultry. You know, in poultry, it is a standard that you visit the farm in the morning, visit the farm in the evening, so that you can be able to monitor the health status, but it is not to snail farming. And as you all know, snails are generally harmless, and they are
also so as we all know um I earlier said um it needed a small uh, space as we all know now due to its low fats and low cholesterol level this makes nails meat to be very good for people who are suffering from vascular diseases such as heart attack, cardiac arrest, hypertension, and stroke. Uh, it, is, it has been proven that a mixture of the blood from snail with palm kernel mixed together, well rubbed on the body, reduces the effect of stroke or headache. And as we all know, it is cheap in the market and it has both local and international market standards. Now, let us look at the available species of snails we have. If I mean species, I mean the edible species we have. We have the tiger snail, which is known as Argentina, Argentina. We have the West African snail, which is known as Argentina Mandinata. And we have the East African snail, which is known as Argentina Feluca. Now, let us look at the future of Argentina marginata. This is commonly called the banana wraps or the big black. The reason why it is called the banana wraps is because it loves feeding more on banana leaves. If you are able to cut up banana leaves with some mercy in it, if you give it two days, you can, you can come back to the farm and meet uh, maybe just a little amount of it there. In dimension, it can grow up to 21 centimeters in height and 30 centimeters in maximum diameter, which makes it to be a very good source of weighing for market value. The adults, the The adults can measure up to 8 to 9% 9, to 9 average with cloth of 4 to 20% depending on the size and weight of the snail. So if you are going into the production of Argentina marginata, you need to conduct your market survey to see if this particular species is being accepted in the location you want to grow this particular variety. However, it is acceptable across the east south part of the country, but for you, for you not to be stuck in the market, you need to conduct a primary survey. You, you need to conduct a primary survey to be able to achieve that. Now, let's look at the East African land sale, Argentina for Luca. The future is. They are small in size. The, the mature adult weigh around 10 to 35 kg. It lays eggs of at least 300 eggs per clutch. It is highly adaptable to wide range of environment. The color is predominantly brown with weak, darker banded marking across spirals. This particular species is highly prolific. If you key into this, you are sure of making wood benefit from this production. But however, as I earlier mentioned, it is good to conduct your market survey to know the variety and the species needed for consumption. Now let's look at um, the tiger snail, its futures. This breed is commonly in Ghana, Benin, rivers and aquarium states. Uh, they are very difficult to domesticate, so if you're not uh, a professional in uh, um, production of Argentina, you just hold on in this production so that you don't lose um, your starting capital. But by the time you are not conversant to the production, or you have a consultant by you who is ready on the production, then you can go into this uh, particular, into the production of this particular species. As uh, you all know, it has a high mortality rate of which a close attention is needed for it for the mortality rate to be reduced. The shell is broadly obvious with regular conical spine and narrow at the posterior end. 
it lays up to 150 to 450 eggs per clutch, and the eggs sometimes vary between 0.302 gram each. Now, let's look at the site selection before, you know, um, in every production you do, site selection is paramount. This is what will determine if you are going to remain in the business or you are going to exit the business in no time. Now, let's look at the considerations in selecting our site. As we all know, snails are ardent escapees from enclosure. Whenever you enclose them, they always find a way to make sure that they escape. So now, a priority in setting up a productive snail farming venture is therefore necessary to construct a housing whereby it is all escape proof. There are several types of snail housing to choose from. Now, it's now depending on your income. As I mentioned, you can use the tire, you can use the snot boxes, you can use uh, the block housing and many other things that are available as you reach. But remember, you shouldn't be limited by housing not to go into scenery production. Now, let's look at the main factors to consider in site selection. Uh, the first important factor to consider is the climate. You know, snails, as we all know, they are nocturnal feeders. Most of the activities happen at night. So they need a microclimate that will not give them this feeling that yes, they're in the wild, so they can be able to sustain whatever they are doing. So in trying to create a microclimate for them, it is advisable to have a standard, maybe a plantation of trees around the housing of the snail, thereby giving it, you know, a, 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 a giving it a daylight requirement is needed. So please uh, don't go in and um, store your snails in the hot environment and think they are going to sustain it. They will just go into dorm dormancy and you, and you lose time. They might not die, but you lose time. And then it is not advisable for you to enclose your snail in a very cold environment, because as we all know, okay, as human beings also have our own room temperature, salt is also applied to the snails. Now, after achieving this, we now look at the wind speed and direction. You know, if you find yourself in Sokoto, for instance, during the Hamatan season, you know the level of dehydration is very, very high. Due to the world, due to the quantum of um, dry breeze that is coming up, so the same thing is applicable to these snails. So if you want them to do well, then you must try as much as possible to reduce the volume of of um, the volume and speed of of breeze or air going into their housing. So for you to achieve this, we have various technology. In, in order to, uh, to reduce the impact of um, speed of wind. Let's say, for instance, I mentioned earlier, you plant you plant some um, trees around the housing. This will help reduce the effects. This will help reduce the effects of the wind into what? Into the housing, and thereby maintaining the microclimate they desire for their normal functioning. And also, we we'll have to consider sunlight. Because uh, you know how it will look like if you find yourself to be under the sun around 12 noon. You know how it will look like, you know. So the same is applicable to snails. Try as possible to reduce direct sunlight to the housing so that they can be able to give you, you know, distant time. Now, let us look at the soil characteristics needed to grow snails. Uh, you, you can imagine how are these uh, minor livestock
phosphorus, and so many other micronutrients. As we all know, it is, um, it is uh, a clear fact that the shell of snails is mostly 98% calcium. Now, you have to give this calcium in two forms. It is not advisable to use sandy soil because, of, as we all know, sandy soil is highly erodible. It has low water retention capacity, so therefore, it can it can it will not give it the it will not give the snail the humid environment it deserves to function well. Now, in considering uh, snail production, we have to look at the safety of um, this snail production. The safety is very, very paramount. Now, how do you protect these snails from diseases, predators, and so many other factors? As I mentioned, if you are going to set up a snail business, okay, make sure you are keen. Make sure you are serious with this business. Because you can go and invest in your money, someone will just come over the night and they'll come and take everything away from you. This is disastrous. I wouldn't want this to happen. So now in building your slurry housing, it is good you, you will locate it where it can be safe, where you, and, uh, it can be safe, where it can be safe from even humans, because humans are even the biggest predator in slurry production. They are the biggest predators, I'm telling you the truth. Forget about the many big scientific we are talking about. Humans, they are the biggest predator. So make sure you, you seclude your housing from direct access of humans into the farm. Uh, as we all know, snails doesn't have uh, much diseases, but um, we still have to do a lot to protect them, most especially if they're overcrowded, okay? Because um, the same things that causes disease to human beings, such as fungi, bacteria, and other sorts of uh, diseases, is still applicable to snails. So we'll try as much as possible to reduce this impact. And uh, it is very important to note, after every three months, you should change the soil in the snail because, you know, they defecate, they, 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 they release their mucus into the soil. So therefore, if it is not being changed at least every three months, it is going to allow it to be prone to diseases. Now, how do you protect these snails from insects predators. We have, um, we have some techniques we use, such as um, the mosquito net. After arranging your house, you can you know, enclose them in the form of um, a screen house, okay, or glass house, as the case may be, depending on your capacity. But um, for starters, we will advise you to use nets so that um, it will be able to be easy for you. Now, it is very important, you know, there is, um, whenever you are managing your slavery, please, for the sake of urgency, don't allow it to go into dormancy. Because environment can make them to go into dormancy. Let's say if the temperature is too hot, the humid needed in the house will be lost. Therefore, they will now go into dormancy. Now, if the temperature is too cold, okay, now for them to now have their own normal room temperature, it will still affect the production, they will still go into dormancy. So it is advisable, we try as well as possible, we go through the presentations today so that we can be able to comprehend and understand all that has been discussed, so that in the part two, we are going to look at the intensive management and then all the marketing strategies and every other necessary input that is needed in slavery production.
Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you on the training tomorrow. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Abdelaziz. Uh, the training was quite uh, impactful. Uh, this section, we welcome, uh, we welcome questions. Uh, you can send us your questions through the chat box. We'll be here to attend to your questions. Please, the time frame is uh, five to 10 minutes because of time we can only attend to some questions. But please use your chat box to send your questions. Good day once again. Please, uh, you can send your questions to the chat box now, please. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Abdelaziz, you have a question for Emmanuel Osage. I uh, said, uh, my question is, you said we should change the soil for after three months. What if they lay eggs in the soil? How do we go about it? Over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful and intelligent question. As you all know, the breeding period is during the rainy season, okay? And um, you have to be, you have to, you have to look at the gestation period. There is how you understand when they are what about to lay. Okay, so once you notice they are about to lay, for you to be at the safer side, not to allow them to be prone to diseases, you quickly evacuate the soil, bring in new soils so that they can have a better environment for egg production and for breeding. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for the answer. Please we welcome more questions. You can use uh, the chat box to ask your questions.
Okay, um, there is a message here by uh, Mr. Moses. Uh, Dr. Abdulaziz is thanking you for the wonderful presentation. Now his question is, uh, aside banana leaves, what are the common household for household food that can be fed to snail? Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ijuve Moses, uh, for this wonderful question. As we all know, um, snails feed on eventually everything human feeds on. So after you can use a uh, leaves, you can use a uh, cucumber, you can use watermelon. In fact, eventually everything human feeds on snails feed on them. So it all depends on their level of growth. If they are the juvenile level, they prefer succulents leaves to feed on. Okay, but while they have attained the adult level, they prefer a more mature leaves that, that will be chopped off away, will be chopped off from the host plants for them to feed on. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for the answers. I will just take one more question coming from Mr. Victor said between gold, business, and sheep, which is more preferable? Okay. Um, thank you so much for this question. Uh, you know, we are not uh, dealing precisely on gold and sheep in this session. Uh, we have a, a special package on how to go into sheep and gold production, whereby you can maximize profit with little income. But however, sheep and goats varies in terms of area of production. For instance, if you are producing sheep around the modern Aziz, you stand a better chances of making more profit, while if you are producing goat around the east and west Aziz, you stand a better chance of making good returns on investment. Thank you. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for your time, uh, for the efforts you've put uh, into to this training by making sure you attend this training. Uh, there will be no further questions. And uh, uh, for, more, for further information, uh, please send us an email to info at cardaeng.com or visit our website on www dot crowdarng.com. On behalf of Crowder Agricultural Team, I would love to thank you for attending today's training and do hope you find it uh, the learning uh, um, helpful. Until we meet again for part two of this training tomorrow, enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe. Thank you.